problem with liquid feedback, right, is the makers of, of liquid feedback, they intended the system for organizations, right? Mm. Where you are kind of a delegate, right, and you, uh, and, and uh, or let's say there are certain uh, organizations, countries or parties or departments, right, and, and they would, they would um, cast their vote in the system and they could also delegate votes. Mm -hmm. And so everybody would, there would be full transparency about who voted for what, right? So you can't be anonymous. You can't be anonymous. But there are a lot of scenarios where this is always the case. It's, I mean, like, it's, it's when you're voting in the United Nations, right? Then uh, every country is uh, recognized. Identified. Uh, identified. Absolutely. Correctly. So there are scenarios where you are decision, you are, you are decision making without being anonymous. Yeah. This is mostly when professional representatives <laughs> represent an organization or a state or a certain group of people, right? Yes. It's also in the Pirate Parties International, it's like if you're going there as a delegate for an International Pirate G General Assembly, then you are not uh, voting anonymous. Uh, instead, uh, it is pointed out which country voted for what. Yeah. Right? In this scenario, you can pretty much use liquid feedback. But if you are uh, more on a personal level, inside of a political party, where every party member has a voice and, and can vote, right? Although you're not voting on people, it, there is a big data protection problem because uh, if, if I'm online on, with my profile, then um, the thing is, um, if, if you want to make, um, if, if the system should be trusted, right? So I, I, it should be transparent that I can, that I, that I know, okay, 70% uh, of the people voted for this, right? Yes. And I can I can look into that and verify that. Okay. Yes. For that, you have to publish the results, yes. right? So that means in in our case in Germany, it was like you could download a dump of the liquid feedback database, right? Yeah. And, and and verify every result. But now, if people are not anonymous, that allows you to to profile people yeah. with their political. Uh, Thoughts, right? And everybody could could do that because in a in a in a pirate party with uh, like more than ten thousand members, yeah. uh, you you cannot keep that information secret, right? Because everybody of these ten thousand members can download the dump, right? So uh, 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 that that is a big a big data protection problem, right? Well, um, we just had that in Australia with the Australia Bureau of Statistics. You know, they take a census every year of the population, and historically speaking, the census has been taken for nearly a hundred years in Australia, and it's always been anonymous. And any good survey. If you want people to tell the truth, then you make it anonymous so that they don't have to suffer the yeah, consequences. But, the but our government now, yeah. so that yeah. they could be sure that you know this was the right person. People are not voting twice, for example, then you have to take their identity. But the thing is, when you, when you, as a citizen, when you just don't just say yes or no or A or B. But when you start writing policy as well, contributing to a constitution, then I think you have to bear the, bear the consequences of that, of actually giving your identity. What's the problem? What is the problem? You get a lot more than just saying yes or no. Yeah, I mean, like, in a, in a political party, the members have to decide that if they want that. In yeah. Germany, they didn't like that, right? Mm. Because of data protection issues, mm. right? Um, because if, if you if you want uh, you want everybody to, uh, to to give give everybody the possibility to participate, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, then uh, you have to take into consideration that maybe some of the party members, right, are uh, in a position where they're fearing the consequences of, right? Because uh, everybody could download the dump and then look into it and say like, okay. Uh, this guy, um, uh, 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 the, the, the guy that applies for the job here, uh, uh, he, uh, uh, this is his political beliefs, right? Yeah. And so um, that, that, that is potentially a problem for... Well, that's the problem in Australia. 
and people went crazy that they had to a, a unique ID that would follow them around for years because it was asking very personal questions like your religion. Yeah, ex yeah? Ex exactly. And people thought they would be profiled. But now, Which but, 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 right. yeah, but now in, in liquid feedback, there is uh, uh, the solution to that was that you would give um, people um, uh, uh, what, what they did was they installed kind of a clearing house, right? Yeah, and people could then register a pseudonym. Yes. And um, only the clearing house would know the, the the connection, right? Well, I think that's fine. Yeah. So, so you could go online and leak with feedback and and give yourself like an alias, yes, right? And then vote with that one. Yes. But that also doesn't really work. And why is that? Because in liquid feedback, you are delegating your votes, right? Yeah. And if you're going online and then an anonymous alias, right? Yeah. Then you won't receive. Uh, any delegations, right? Because there are some people that are maybe in the members of the parliament or they have been on TV, right? Mm. So there, there was their clear name. Yeah. So they, re they receive all those delegations. And so if you then, the thing is like, um, it, it burns down to either you can be anonymous on the system, but then um, you, you will not have any influence because you will not receive delegations yeah. or if you are um, if you are um, uh, why can't you receive you... delegations in the real world hmm? why can't you receive the delegations in the real world why does it only have to happen online I mean surely if I wanted my doctor to vote for me to be my proxy I would delegate my vote to him it would be a real world connection and a, and a real relationship of trust and a real duty of care Back towards me. Well, the, so the, these things can happen the in the theory, real world. The theory behind these delegations is also that there is kind of uh, a real world trust behind them, yeah. right? But uh, it is, it is of course, um, if the system wants to count the votes, right? You have to input this into into the system, right? Yeah. yeah. Only because you saying like uh, your doctor should vote for you doesn't mean that that that, that he um, that, that that your vote uh, that, that his vote is counted twice right yeah so of course you have to delegate the the uh, um, delegate to him in the in the in the system right yes, yes. and um, then uh, uh, this so uh, this this kind of delegations conflicts with anonymity right yeah, yeah. Um, and the other thing is like uh, the way that they did these delegations, meaning that you can you can um, you can not only delegate for a certain issue mm. or for a certain topic, but you can globally glo make global delegations. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, how can you trust people globally, right? Yeah. It's 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 very difficult, and it's like well, that's um, what we do currently. It's like. Many people registered for the system mm. then put in uh, a global delegation mm. and then never log in again, right? Mm. So it means that there are a lot of delegation, a lot of delegated power was floating around in that system yeah. and then uh, that led to to um, kind of weird decisions, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, in my eyes, it's like um, you, you cannot... Um, is about um, if you are if you're delegating your vote to me, right? Yeah. Then you can trust in me, right? Mm. Uh, now I'm delegating my vote to her, right? Yes. Um, that, but that doesn't mean that, that you that you can her. trust her, right? Yeah. Because the trust in a person, in a real world person, is not a transitive um, a transitive uh, attribute. Yes. Okay, yes. so uh, 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 let's say um, if you have a personal relationship, right? Maybe um, uh, um, 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 when, when you you love Birgitta, okay? Yeah. Birgitta maybe loves me, but that doesn't mean that you love me, right? No, that's right. Unless I really, really suffer from cognitive dissonance, and then so, I better so make you, myself so, so love the, the, you the, the as thing well, is, or hate is, her. The thing is, if you delegate, if you delegate your vote into liquid feedback, right? Yes. You're trusting in people, but that is not tra transitive, right? Yes. So you cannot, 
you cannot make, uh, you cannot, uh, uh, the, the problem is you can delegate your vote to me. But when I delegate my vote to someone else, right? But I didn't realize that there was a whole chain of delegation but like that's that. that's what I call transitive delegations. Yes. So that is what... Is that, a, is that what actually ends up happening? The people just pass it on, do they? Yes, yes. So they pass it on. And then there are people that have like 250 votes. Because so they are super delegates, right? Yeah, and that, yes. that is, that is um, a, a normally... So what I suggested to them is that, they, that the, the, the transitive delegation would be would be um, would be throttled down. So meaning that you delegate your vote to me, right? Now I have two votes. When I delegate my vote to her, right, then I would pass my vote fully on to her, but your vote uh, would only be passed by 50%, right? Yes. So because that would that would um, that would um, cut off the effect of of, of um, cognitive dissonance of of, <laughs> of, of total uh, delegation power and you know and make, uh, make these super delegates so much smaller. So where does the other smaller, half of right? my vote go then? Well, that that doesn't go anywhere then in that case. Oh, oh. Yeah, so, but, so does yeah, that mean uh, that if I give my vote away, I only get half a vote? Well, the thing is, what I think is, um, if you one, one problem with liquid feedback is like, imagine that you are voting for a very important issue, right? Yeah. So let's say, uh, the question is, should we take refugees from Syria to Germany, yes or no, right? Yeah. Now, there are, let's say, 600 people or 600 votes which are cast, right? Yeah. yeah. But then if you, if you look at how many people are really, uh, are, are really voting, yeah. So they read the text of the of the um, they they read the text of the um, proposal. Yes, of the proposal, mm -hmm. and we're studying it. We're thinking about that, right? Yeah. So then, in the end, you come down to there are only six people, right? Who really give a shit? Who really made that decision, right? Yeah. So the question is, when there are ninety percent of the people passively. Um, participating, mm. right, um, but only six brands were actually working on it, right? Mm -hmm. And then the question is how does that scale up, right? You have a political party that has, let's say, uh, 35,000 members, right? Mm -hmm. From these 35,000 members, there are 10,000 members registered in liquid feedback. Yeah. Now 600 people participate in that decision and from this 600 people, um, 594 are passively delegating their vote, yes. and only six people are actually mm. um, uh, voting, right? So it comes so, back down to representative politics uh, so again, that doesn't is, it? That is kind, kind, uh, uh, somehow kind of a problem, but... But then maybe, look, you know, over time, I think that you have to understand that a lot of people don't take an interest in politics because they don't think that it's going to have any effect. But as soon as you give people that kind of feedback that, well, if you do participate, I, it will have an effect, the, then it becomes more the, of a habit. I think the, 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 the problem with liquid feedback and German Pirate Party was that uh, most people were just um, kind of... Um, very, very unrelaxed uh, uh, ab about this, right? Oh, I'm, I'm very proud that we have that we have set up the system, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, so you actually and, worked uh, on it? Uh, no. Yeah. No, not me in person, but um, that we, we set up the system. Mm. <clears throat> and what we did was um, there's all, all, also some confusion that people say like it was kind of a test run. Yeah. I would call it a proof of concept yes. because a test run would be like you are just doing this with test users and test data. No, it was real world issues yeah. that were um, covered yes. in the system. Yes. So it's kind of a proof of concept. Yeah. And I think that that was a good idea to make that proof of concept and collect all this experience with yeah. the system. Yeah. But the problem was that we were not able then collectively to develop, develop it further, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that was mainly because nobody was really responsible for that. Yeah. And some people said like, well, uh, how we develop liquid feedback, we will make this decision in liquid feedback, right? Yeah. But that is also a problem because you've got a 
uh, uh, chicken and egg problem here, right? Because if decision making and liquid feedback really doesn't work for you, then how can you use liquid feedback for making decisions how to change the system, right? Yes, that's uh, that right. Was a, that was one problem. Um, but then we have old habits, you know. I'm just going back to Athens. And of course, it wasn't a, a real direct democracy because it was only um, male uh, white slave owners that, that got to vote. But they went up there and, and actually cast their vote physically, and everybody saw who was voting for what. I mean, in the Athenian democracy, sort of direct democracy, um, nobody felt any need to be anonymous. Nobody even thought about anonymity. What, what we were given was anonymity in the voting booth. Like here, when you go into that voting booth, it's all like behind a curtain and we think, you know, we've grew up, our grandparents would not tell anybody who they voted for. We were told not to ask people. That was people's private business. But is that not a way of dividing and conquering? What, what value is, is there in having this anonymous? Because really, you don't have any power at all when you go into that booth. When you, today, when you get the left and the right are both, you know, been hijacked by the corporate state. Yeah. You're not really having any choice at all. And what value is this anonymity? Because it doesn't really matter what you vote for. Yeah, one, one problem with, with, with liquid feedback was that people totally overestimated that, okay? The thing is, um, what we wanted to do is, in my opinion, was for, uh, we wanted to collect experiences yeah. how uh, we could use this technology in, in real world politics, right? Yes. Uh, so, and we said to collect these experiences, we will do proof of concept inside of our political party. Yes. Because we all have to understand this and get a common sense about how this is going to, how this should work. Maybe not if, the best if, sample before, of the population, though. Before you before, guys are all largely hackers, you don't want people to know who you are. <laughs> you guys are obsessed by by your, you know, need for privacy and and and, and yeah, yeah, but, You but, take another group of average no, citizens; no, no, no. they may not no, be so concerned we, about that. We, we wanted we wanted to to to, to uh, like do proof of concept and uh, the thing is um, all the decisions that we make into the party right they're not really so challenging because it's uh, just for coming up with a program yeah. and then getting vo elected into the parliament right yes and um, uh, in, in in Germany we have part so much uh, um, I, I think that some people got the idea that um, it is so extremely important making these internal decisions inside of the Pirate Party uh, because um, uh, we need to come up with solutions that we can then um, give to the parliament, right? Yeah, but yeah. In, in fact it's like um, all that you are doing in a political party is just come up with some suggestions to get elected. And then when you are into the parliament, then you develop the solutions, yeah. right? So you don't need to come up with all the solutions before being elected. Yeah. The other parties also don't do that. Yeah. But I think in that regard, we were too perfect. And so they wanted kind of a perfect system where they can make all this decision process online, right? Well, at the same time, you know, if you do perfect that, then that can be part of your 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 sales pitch, your platform on which to to appeal to citizens, especially young people who want to have a say. Yeah, but so but, it could be fundamental. Yeah, 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 but but for that, people that are um, the people that are um, advocating liquid feedback, right? So they should uh, inside of German Pirate Party kind of um, take responsibility mm. for liquid feedback and that was what they didn't do right yeah. so they were filing motions and demanded the board to install the system yeah. and then there was no project leader and no people responsible that were dealing with the complaints yeah. of other people yeah, right yeah, yeah. so and uh, uh, they should have taken more responsibility yeah. so I think that that, that the whole thing failed more on, on, a, on a personal level, right? Because the people that put up this liquid feedback, they were not trusted, right? So... Um, Who was that? Hmm? Who was doing it? 
Who were the people who were running the... Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, it was three people from Berlin. Yeah. which were from the Liquid Democracy EV, so they were the, the developers of Liquid Feedback, yeah. and they were also members of the Pirate Party. Uh -huh. Then later, when uh, they got a shitstorm, they left the Pirate Party. Yes. And they also, um, it's, uh, the one problem also was, Liquid Feedback was not a system that was developed by the Pirate Party, right? Yeah. So some people from Berlin say that, but it's not, it's not really true, because they, they didn't get, um, the, the board of the German Pirate Party didn't order them to develop this system, right? So the Pirate Party didn't, didn't come up with requirements for the system. It was like they developed the system on their own yeah. and they were also um, members of the Pirate Party, but their, work, but their work was their, their personal work and it was not a shared approach within the Pirate Party, right? right? So the the um, the people, most people in the Pirate Party, didn't have a chance to um, to uh, give their ideas or their requirements into the development process, yes. right? So they said, like, we're developing liquid feedback. Then later they left the Pirate Party. Yes. They said, um, no, you cannot use liquid feedback in the Pirate Party. That's not a good idea because of the anonymity issues. Yeah. And they said, well, yeah, this is our source code. You can take that, right? But um, uh, if, you want, if you want a different, if you want your own requirements and you have to fork it, which some people from Bavaria did, right? Mm -hmm. So they developed another, they, they, they forked it without these transitive delegations, right? right? But the, the thing was, um, yeah, there was not um, the thing. The thing was. Um, um, was this in 2013 that they were developing the liquid feedback? No, no. In in 2000, uh, the it, the system exists longer. But uh, in 2010, we made the decision to uh, install it oh, yeah. on a national level. Oh, okay. Before that, Berlin was running it. Yeah. Right. And who were the people, who were the developers? Were they a university team or independent people? There were, there were um, people from Berlin. Yes. And they, they were members of the Liquid Democracy EV. All right. So they, they have a kind of, uh, they, they founded, uh, they have some kind of foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they were developing this, mm. right? Uh, and they were also, uh, joining the Pirate Party and promoting it uh, inside of the Pirate Party and then, then later left the Pirate Party and backed off from that promotion. I see. Were they involved with WikiLeaks as well? Hmm? Were they involved with WikiLeaks as well? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Right. Yeah. Because cool. it doesn't, there is no, there is no uh, combination Co with whistleblowing. No, 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 of course not. Um, no, it's just that some people in Australia were working on that who were also involved with WikiLeaks, but I don't think that they were... Uh, there was any feedback. Yes, yes. Don't think there was any overlap. It was just that they were computer people. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know that. One guy <coughs> was you mean? systems analyst, and he was involved in working on liquid feedback. But he also had a lot to do with the WikiLeaks um, movement as well. So with the WikiLeaks party, you mean? He was, yeah, he was the secretary of the Wiki. He was appointed secretary of the WikiLeaks party. But before that, he was just a run-of-the-mill activist, and he was also, um, you know, very fond of not a good guy, a good guy. He was very fond of the Occupy movement and anonymous as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it was just different things that were going around. Okay, I don't, I don't think that they had any involvement there, but uh, I don't know it for sure. But yeah. they never, they never, uh, I, they, they presented their project at the Chaos Communication Congress yeah. in December 2009. Oh, and that early? Yes, yes, yes. And and therefore, when in 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 in, uh, in when in spring 2010, they came up with that motion at the General Assembly in Bingen, yeah. uh, then um, that was kind of, um, it was kind of, um, 
uh, very trending trending stuff by that time, right? But uh, they presentations, and they never um, they they never said anything about WikiLeaks. So I don't think that there was, there was any kind of an involvement yeah. and yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I know that there was some development of the liquid feedback system on um, in Australia that was in, you know, but that was going on in 2013, yeah. No, 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 don't give me that smile again. You, you think, you're thinking she knows something and I want to know what she's thinking. <laughs> Not going to say it on camera. Um, yeah, anyway, well, look, that's great. That's great. So, in, in fact, they just abandoned it in the end. It was more or less abandoned. But w when did Smari take up um, this? I think, I think in, in 2012 or 2013, uh, he developed uh, his own system. Yeah. So, uh, it's interesting. Uh, many pirate parties have taken their own approach into this, right? Mm -hmm. Like the pirate party in Great Britain and the Swiss pirate party. So they come up with 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 uh, their own systems for uh, uh, online voting. Yes. And uh, Smari came up with something that's called Vasa Il, and it is uh, also kind of a liquid um, liquid uh, democracy approach. He calls it like this. But I think it doesn't have this transitive delegations. Yeah. But it's kind. It's I kind think of, it's just a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's kind of it, it has something like uh, if if you are voting for a certain topic, yes, then you are um, you're making a ranking, and then uh, so your vote is never lost, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, it's kind of what you told me earlier. Uh, when you're like the system in Australia where the votes are floating down, Very I think it's kind of it's kind of a preference voting system. No, look, you know, the, and they're the using value and they're that, using this in Iceland yeah. for for internal decision making. All right. And I think, uh, and uh, let, let me let me say one one uh, uh, last thing. Uh, what was a very very positive thing about liquid feedback? I, I don't think if you if you if you look at the liquid feedback from a rational point of view, right? Then uh, this this thing really didn't work quite well. But um, personally, from a psychological point of view, if you are in a political party, right? Then. You got the problem that there are so many people, and those people are not feeling that they are integrated, right? So then they are maybe getting angry, or they are forming certain groups. They are shitstorming the board and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, liquid feedback gives you something like um, gives everybody the feeling that he can uh, participate. Yes. I can. I can. Um, uh, 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 when I was uh, in 2012, I was. Um, in Barcelona, uh, at the um, um, PPEU conference for uh, uh, nego negotiating the um, negotiating the um, contents of the statutes of the European Pirate Party, and uh, many of those uh, international pirates were there. Then. Um, we had to come up with an election program, right? And we were developing that on liquid feedback. And all, every day when I was going with the, with the subway from my hotel to the conference place, which took me about 25 minutes. Mm. During that time, I had liquid feedback on my, on my smartphone because it was a kind of, you could run it on, a, uh, uh, on, uh, on your smartphone very easily. And I was all the time like um, delegating my votes or voting on, on motions and stuff like that. And it gave me the feeling like that I was totally participating, right? Yeah. So it's a psychological thing that um, um, people are, are accepting the decisions that are made by the General Assembly because they have been a part of it. Of course. It gives them the feeling that, they, uh, that, that, that their voice was here, right? Yeah. Because they... Um, uh, 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 they um, liquid feedback. It is like there is a motion 
and the first step is that you will um, that you will um, that you will um, vote for that motion because it has to reach a certain threshold because if it doesn't reach that threshold then it is not handled in that system right yeah so first of all you get uh, you are in a certain group let's say for foreign polit policies or you are in the in the uh, in the group for net politics and data protection then they are in in this in this field there are about let's say 800 people that are interested in that and then you you got to uh, uh, and then, then first of all you're voting if the motion should be voted now only if it gets 10% of the people's voice it is even then operated in the system right, right. so this is for, to keep trolls out right yes. so and and it's uh, great. Uh, yeah and, and so the, the good thing is that there is kind of a structured process, right? Yes. So if I know we have a general assembly uh, next year in March, then I can count back and say like, okay, at the end of November, I have to put my stuff online, so then it can go through this process, and I will have a result in January, yep. and that will give me the time then to file the motion for the assembly in February, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. you can come up with a timeline, and it makes the whole process more um, pending. So there are a lot of positive aspects. Sounds but like it's one good of the for pity, us. One of the pity was that um, that um, um, because because all this liquid feedback stuff was so badly handled because nobody from the promoters was responsible, right? The, the developers had left the party, right? In the board there was uh, there was a young lady. She was very very good, but she didn't really know anything about e-voting, right? Yeah. So she was she was very good on talk shows, and uh, uh, Berlin Pirate Group um, made this kind of her project, right? But um, she also didn't find any solution to deal with people that were unhappy. Yeah. And then um, people were not seeing all those arguments. Mm. And what uh, uh, and, and what, what happened then that, that that people were shooting on other people, right? Yeah. When it came to all those issues. Yeah. And it's a pity that we have never like um, collected all these experiences in kind of a collective report or something like this. Uh, we never made this. Yeah, but it sounds like it's a it's a very good system for a small, smaller uh, population it, it would be, that it would are be, all motivated, would, think, that are all yeah, yeah. engaged and, think, and informed already. It, it would be a very very good idea for uh, the Council of the European Pirate Party. You yeah. could use it there very very good. But they don't. They don't already. No, no, because them. We are mostly not uh, really active because um, many many people have lost its interest and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Um. I think that's one thing that Asha Wolf, when she wrote her article about the Pirate Party, that's that's the thing that she really admired about its internal structure, the liquid feedback part of it. Where did she write a book? Not a book. No, an article. Just an article. She wrote it in 2013 about uh, September so it was just after the elections yeah I can dig it up for you yeah just google Asher Wolf Pirate Party yeah yeah you'll, you'll I, find will, it. I, will, I will find that yeah yeah it's a very yeah. complimentary article and she's she was wondering why the WikiLeaks party wasn't run that way it was supposed to be democratic and in fact, it was a totally top-down organization. Yeah, I'm, 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 totally, I'm totally wondering. Um, uh, uh, I mean, like, I, I, I have met Asha Wolf one time, but I'm totally wondering what she's, uh, what she's really doing, because she's not a member of the Pirate Party. She, she, um, you know. Um, she's a kind of an independent journalist in a way she's a mother she's a single mother yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's um, an independent journalist yeah she was very much uh, interested in Occupy before that she was an interested in anonymous she was interested yeah. in WikiLeaks I remember Julian's mother got very upset when Asher stopped writing about WikiLeaks and moved on to Occupy and then later down the track she became much more interested in uh, in the Pirate Party, but Asher is a, a free agent. She she can take an interest in whatever she likes, you know. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is she yeah. giving me that smile again? <laughs> I think we should we should cut now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was very informative.